Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Welcome back to my channel, my loverlies. If you've never been here before, thank you so much for clicking on my video. I am so happy you found me. I do so hope that you will like and subscribe before you leave. Become part of the Mama family. Mama's got your back, at least for makeup's concerned, and definitely when that makeup is cheap. Today is True Love Tuesday. We're going back to Greek mythology. I was craving a good myth this week and I found a good one. Hopefully it is as new to you as it was to me. We're talking about Atalampa, Atalanta and Hippomenes. Now I have the most difficult time pronouncing some of these names so if I do get them wrong please give me just a little bit of grace. Also if you're aware of how to pronounce them correctly please let me know in the comments below. I definitely could use any help in that aspect. Uh, that I could get. Y'all, if you are new to my channel, first of all, let me give you a very, very warm welcome. Thank you so, so very much for being here. I am incredibly happy to have you. If you do enjoy the content, make sure that you give this video a big old thumbs up. Make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you turn on your notifications so that way next time I upload a video, you can come right back here and we can hang out together again y'all true love tuesday basically i just sit here i do my makeup and i tell you a story usually a really epic love story we just kind of hang out for a little while uh, i do really enjoy these videos so so much i hope you guys do as well today's video is probably going to be a little bit of a longer one but i would love to know your feelings on it duration uh, of videos in the comments do you prefer the longer videos do you prefer shorter videos uh please let me know i would love to curate my content exactly to be what you guys want to see uh, and all the input input that you guys give me is definitely going to help with that uh, I did make sure to do a TikTok on today's eye look. I am very much in love with it. It's a little bit sassy. It's a little bit classy. All kinds of wonderful. I used the W7 Warm Up Palette. Such a super good, affordable, affordable palette. Guys, as always, I did film a TikTok on today's eye look. I will have the tag for that, as well as a full list of all the products that I'm going to be using in today's video listed in the description box below. And of course, if you have any questions about what I used or how I used it, all you have to do is leave me a comment and I will get back to you. If you see me looking over in this direction, it is because I am looking at my notes. There are quite a few of them for today's video. We're gonna be here probably for at least 45 minutes. Uh, so I hope that you guys get yourself a big old cup of coffee, ice cold glass of sweet tea, and let's just go ahead and dive right into it. Atalanta and Hippomenes. So Atalanta was born in Arcadia, which is a region of Greece in the southern uh, in the southern part of the Peloponnese Peninsula. As an infant, Atalanta was abandoned by her father, who was the king of Arcadia, and this was pure and simple for no other fact than she wasn't a boy. Uh, he really wanted a, a, a son, an heir to his throne, and unfortunately, Atalanta was born with the wrong body parts and he just didn't want any parts of her so he actually lacking all sense of like decency as a human being all sense all sense of goodness or godliness uh, he orders his daughter to be abandoned at the top of a mountain and left to either die of hunger or to be devoured by ferocious beasts now Artemis coincidentally uh, Artemis is the goddess of she's like the goddess of she's a hunting goddess I believe uh, she was cas casually hunted in the same area, the vicinity of where they left uh, Atlanta to be just kind of like deserted. And so Artemis comes across Atlanta and she feels sorry for the poor baby and she takes pity on her. And instead of Atlanta like actually putting her hands on this child or actually doing anything for her, she sends this big giant black bear to Atlanta and this black bear had just given birth to cubs so uh she kind of takes atlanta under her under her paw really and uh nurses her and nurtures her and feeds her and protects her until atlanta you know grows some becomes stronger and older and a little bit more able to take care of herself then one day, uh, Atalanta was found by a group of hunters. And of course, this group of hunters had been sent by Artemis and was in, indeed just an extension of Artemis. Uh, and these group, this group of hunters basically ends up adopting Atalanta. And by that fact, it, she's kind of adopted by Artemis as well. So they adopt uh, Atalanta and they take her in and they raise her to be an amazing huntress. Uh, they taught her 
Uh, she had learned how to hunt like a bear and become a skilled, uh, skilled uh, and sought after huntress. She grew up fending for herself. Uh, she really just did not like the idea of marriage in any way, shape or form. She really just could not deal with the thought of ever having to uh, ever having to be married. And in general, she just really didn't even like men. Uh, I think that for the most part, um, and of course this group of, of hunters was, were, were female. So I think the idea of her being basically in the vicinity of any man really was just like very like tasteless to her. She just, it left kind of a foul taste in her mouth. She didn't want anything uh, to do with it. Uh, and fending for herself, she hated the idea of marriage and didn't really care for men in general. Before long, she was full grown and fully lethal. Uh, she uh, was sent out very often to kill centaurs uh, in the name of her goddess Artemis. Uh, and every year, the uh, Caledonians, now I think that's how you say their name, but I'm not sure again. But every year, the Caledonians would have a, a festival of thing, uh, of sorts. They held a boar hunt in honor of the goddess Artemis. Uh, but this year, the king of Cal Caledon had failed to honor Artemis in a way that she thought was acceptable. So uh, you guys know, even the best intentioned gods and goddesses are all spiteful, angry teenagers. Uh, and because she did not get the, uh, the proper honor, the proper devotion that she felt like she deserved, she got very, very mad at the king and uh, at his people. So what does she do? She ends up summoning this incredibly, like this gigantic evil demon boar and she sets it loose on this man's kingdom and it raises havoc it goes throughout the entire kingdom it uh destroys got gardens it destroys crops it hurts people it just is causing complete and total chaos now they can't the humans can't have this so they of course put together a hunting party uh and they you know they have to go over the uh, they have to go after this thing so among this group of uh, super, extremely skilled hunters, like all kinds of heroes come together. Uh, many great male heroes came together to hunt and kill it. But there was also one woman. Atalanta, armed with her trusty bow and arrow, was the first uh, was the first hunter uh, that really kind of stepped up and she basically knew what she was doing. She was the best of the bunch. And she was actually the one who landed the first blow on this demon boar. And uh, it had super thick, tough armor like skin. And really they like they couldn't, they couldn't penetrate it. Uh, people would hit it, but people just really couldn't like hurt it. But Atalanta was the first one to actually hurt the animal. She opened its skin enough that the other hunters could then go in and finish it off. And uh, when it was finally captured and killed, the man who had struck the final blow, a man named Malager, uh, he gave Atlanta the head and the hide as a reward. Because of course she had done pretty much the hardest part. She had kind of opened it up, uh, opened the animal up so that everybody else could go in and kind of do their thing. So it only goes, you know, it's only like civil that she would get a reward for that. So he gives her the hide and the head. Now, unfortunately, this guy, Malager, his uncles, <laughs> they were not happy about this. They did not like this at all. And Malager was actually quite enamored of Atlanta, and he gave her the hide in the head as a profession of his love, right? He was like, I love you so much. Please take this gift uh, and just please kind of think of me and things like that. His uncles, however, this was a very giant demon boar. Of course, its head and its hide were going to be extremely valuable. And his uncles got greedy and they got jealous and they just were not having it. Uh, so they tried to take that. They tried to take these rewards back. Uh, they went up to Atlanta and they were like, heck no, you can't have this. Uh, this, you know, it belongs to our nephew. It's ours first. We have claim. And Atlanta was like, Atlanta was super PO'd, but Malager was even more so because again, not only had this been a gift to her, but it had also been a profession of his love. It had been a token of his affection. So he gets really, really mad and he ends up uh, challenging his uncles to, uh, to battles, to duels. And he battles each and every one of them. He battles them to the death and he ends up winning. Now, Atalanta is just kind of like taking a step back because again, she's really just not, she doesn't even care. She's not, she's not into men at this point. She doesn't, you can love me all you want to. It doesn't mean I have to love you back. Like she's just not interested. 
but Malika, being the big hero, has got to go out and prove, you know, prove his valor and defend her honor, things like that. So he goes after his uncles, he takes down his uncles, and he thinks that, oh, everything's done only to then turn around and be poisoned by his very own mother. Uh, and she did that in revenge, you know, in order to take revenge for the fact that her son had killed her brothers. I don't see, but there's Greek mythology for you. There's Greek mythology for you. But she kills her own son and then she kind of offs herself and the whole kind of family is, is over and done with. And again, we have Atalanta who's just kind of sitting here being like, what? <laughs> like has no freaking idea what is actually going on and really just, couldn't even be bothered with it just really just doesn't even really care and then uh you know she just kind of goes on because you know malager has gone that first part of our story is kind of gone and of course she just kind of has she has she has to go on she has to live her life so we uh, we continue then we have the aftermath of this big giant uh, kerfuffle. So after helping to hunt and kill the demon boar, Atlanta's name grew in fame and people spoke about her far and wide, wide throughout the entire world. People uh, spoke not only about her prowess on the like in hunting and uh things like that her prowess with her bow and arrow but they also spoke about her beauty and of course if we know nothing about greek men is that they enjoy possessing beautiful things uh women specifically uh and men men will talk men will talk and they just could not get over how absolutely stunning she was they couldn't get over how beautiful she was and on top of that the fact that she was a renowned huntress and the fact that you know she brought worth uh and uh she brought value not just with her image and her body but also with the skill kind of it just blew men's heads off like their people had no idea what they were doing so they all start kind of like tripping over themselves, trying to get at her. Uh, and uh, they traveled back, this news kind of traveled back to her father. And you know, her father, the one that left her on the mountaintop to be eaten by bears. Yeah, that father. News of her achievements kind of travels back to her father. And her father decides, oh, well, maybe she's not so useless after all. And he kind of seeks out Atlanta and he decides to reconcile with her. Now, Atlanta, I guess, is, I don't know. Uh, it was a different time. I guess you had to respect your parents. So her and her father actually do end up reconciling. Uh, they actually start trying to build a little bit of a, a bond together again. But the minute they kind of start to kind of heal and speak to each other again, he lays the bomb on her that he wants her to get married. He wants to capitalize on her popularity at the moment, you know, ride the wave of this big boar hunt. Uh, and he wants to uh, set her up and make the most advantageous match that he can, of course, because uh, any match that she makes is going to reflect, uh, you know, positively or negatively on his on his kingdom, right? On top of that, the better the match she makes, the more money she brings in. And then on top of that, the better, uh, you know, for his grandchildren, because he's still focused on the fact that he needs a male heir. He was never able to provide one. Uh, and Atalanta is basically his last hope. So he needs her. The king needs Atalanta to make a fantastic match. So that way she can go out. She can have lots of strong, wonderful Greek babies to take over his kingdom. And Atalanta, Atalanta is just, she's not having it, dude. She doesn't want anything to do with men. Um, but again, she's kind of like, she's kind of torn. She's really, really torn about the whole thing. When Atalanta had been adopted by the goddess Artemis, uh, she had proudly emulated her divine patroness by vowing that she would always stay pure and that she would never marry, just like the goddess Artemis. Now, upon hearing this, the goddess was pleased and gifted her with her, uh, you know, with her affinity for the bow and arrow, gifted her with strength. But uh, not only did she provide her with like super great accuracy and incredible strength, but she also provided her with speed. Uh, Artemis gifted Atlanta with an, an immense, immense amount of speed. Uh, and Atlanta actually was the fastest woman on the, on the earth. She was the fastest woman in the world. Uh, and it, not many people were super aware of this fact, right? Uh, 
But after reconciling with her father, he again was just really, really pressing her about this getting married issue, about this baby issue. And she was very torn. She was torn between her oath to her goddess and her duty to her father. And knowing that like, if she didn't do this, she really, like she, there was no way she could just plan out say no, right? Because if she just says no, then her father, I mean, bad things are going to happen. But if she just says yes, then her, her goddess Artemis is going to be super, super upset about that and might take her gifts back. So being the incredibly crafty and smart kind of lady that Atalanta, Atalanta is, she decides that she, she comes up with a plan. Uh, she says, oh, she goes to see the Oracle. So uh, torn between her duty to her father and her vow to her goddess, uh, she decided to consult the Oracle of the gods on what she should do and who she should marry, or even if she should marry, right? Now, upon consulting the Oracle, the Oracle had this to say, for anything you need a husband, Atlanta, avoid having a husband. And yet you will not escape from marriage. And still alive, you will see yourself private of yourself. Now these words are incredibly, they're just incredibly confusing. Atlanta has no freaking idea what any of this means. And the thing with the oracles is as all seeing and all knowing as they are, they speak in riddles. And oftentimes you have no idea what they were talking about until it's actually come to pass. So it really was no help to you in the first place. As much as Atalanta could not understand the Oracle's words, she was still frightened. There was an ominous kind of feeling. There was an ominous just vibe to everything that the Oracle had to say. And Atalanta knew that something bad was going to happen. Like she just left the Oracle's presence with such a strong sense of foreboding that she knew that she, she, needed, to do, she needed to do something proactive and she needed to do it now. So what does she do? She packed her bags and ran to the woods and there she stayed. Uh, she decided that she was just going to hide from her problems. She was going to hide in the woods and she was going to hide from any and all suitors, all of the men that were trying to bang her door down uh, and get to her. She was just going to, she was just going to check out. She's going to take a step back and check out. But of course that didn't last very long. That didn't last. People found her. The men found her. Her father found her. The men found her. And then she had to come up with a different plan. She had to figure out what else to do. And then she says, the only man to possess me, she, she devised a plan. She says, I, this is what I'm going to do. She says, the only man to possess me will be the one of you who beats me in a foot race. He, only he will be my husband. Instead, the loser will have to die in punishment for his pretensions. Uh, this is my, this is my first and final proposal basically what she's saying. It's like, okay, yeah. Uh, and, and again, nobody at this point really knows that she's the fastest woman in the world, right? So she's using this to her advantage. And she's basically saying how preposterous, how, oh, what is the word? Because I'm going brain dead. But how, how dare you? How dare you think that you're good enough for me? Because she kind of got a little bit of a God complex, God complex. But she says, how dare you think that you're worthy enough of me? How dare you think, uh, assume uh, that I would want to marry you? So I'll have to, you know, you'll have to earn it, right? Beat me in a foot race. Uh, and then, you know, then I'll, I'll gladly wed and bed you. But if you lose, then, you know, you, you're gone. Bye-bye. See you later. Uh, and it'll be nothing, nothing less than what you deserve. Uh, and so it was. And y'all... After the first couple of races, word got around, word got around how quick this woman actually was. And, you know, you would think that men would start to kind of back off a little bit. You would think that they would kind of realize that -hoo -hoo, maybe there's no reason, maybe there's no feasible way for us to actually win this. Maybe the, the odds are stacked against us and maybe we need to back off just a little bit. But no, each and every man that... Uh, each and every man that entered into this contest against her, right, just knew that they would be the man. They would be the the arrogance. The 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 arrogance is just ugh. They just knew that they would be the man to best her. That there was no one else better than them, and there was no way that they could ever be beat uh, in a foot race by uh, by a mere woman, right? They're thinking it's just not possible. <laughs> okay, they had another thing coming after the first couple of races and the first couple of people that went bye bye men start to kind of double think it a little bit and uh, though the line of suitors has shortened there is still a line there are still those men out there that think that they've got what it takes now uh on to uh you know races and, and death and all that good stuff so 
<sighs> Such was the beauty of the fast Atalanta that many were the unsuspecting young man who dared to compete with her, with the fastest woman in the world. And when they inevitably lost the race, moaning and crying, and with it, they lost their priceless lives. Now word spread of the beautiful and swift Atalanta uh, and of how the task of wedding her was impossible and deadly until it reached the ears of Mr. Hippo. Having heard talk about Atalanta, he considered the risk he would have to face in order to get her as his wife to be excessive. He was just like, she's not worth it. I don't care how pretty she thinks she is. She's just not worth it. No woman, no, no possession is worth my life, right? He considered it excessive. All that changed, though, uh, the minute he saw the splendid body and face of the young woman who had removed the veil from her face. He fell in love and was immediately seduced. And y'all, I mean, she is she is touched by the gods. So I am assuming that she probably was something pretty special to look at. Uh, but of course, he kind of goes and, and he goes to watch the races, things like that. Uh, and she, she takes her veil off uh, to compete in a race and... It, I think it's Hippo Mimi's. Mr. Hippo is completely and just, he's just awestruck. Awestruck by her beauty, as is the, the story and as is the case with most of these myths. These women are just absolutely phenomenally stunning, just gorgeous, gorgeous right? She lifts her veil, she takes off her veil, and he's just instantly, ugh, he's like, he's breathless with how gorgeous she is. And in that very instant, he decides that he can't back down. There is no way that he could ever forgive himself if he didn't at least try to win her hand in marriage. So this is what he says. He says, I'll also try my luck. The prize is worth the risk of death. The prize is worth the risk of death. God always helps those who are brave. He said, inflamed and madly in love. He said, beautiful Atalanta, you have beaten easily and effortlessly these poor boys, but now measure yourself with me. If I beat you, it won't be a dishonor to you. Defeat for you if I win. Uh, he said, it won't be a dishonorable defeat for you if I win. If you win, you'll have beaten, uh, you'll have beaten the, uh, Hippomenes, I think is how you say his name. You will have beaten me, the great grandson of Neptune, god of the waters. So basically he's saying, listen, if I beat you, we, we both know this is what you want. We both know this. I'm I'm a catch, right? He says, if I beat you, it won't be, uh, it won't be dishonorable because, you know, whatever. But if you beat me, then you get to say that you beat the grandson, the great grandson of the god Neptune, right? You beat, you beat a demigod, basically. So it's kind of like a win-win for them both. So she's like, whatever. She, and, and you know, uh, when it comes to Hippomenes, she's kind of, she's not as withdrawn. She's not as reserved and kind of aloof about the whole thing as she really is pretending to be. Because uh, she saw his face and her heart kind of started doing little flippy floppies in her chest as well. She's kind of, she is incredibly and extremely attracted to this man as well. Uh, and she goes on to say, Atalanta raised her beautiful bright eyes up and looked at him tenderly and said, Why do you, foolish boy, want to risk your precious life? You, who are still but a child. You are beautiful and brave because death does not scare you yet. She said, So much love, so much you love and want me that you are willing to die. Run away while you can, young handsome boy. Many other pretty girls would be pleased and happy to marry you. But you're a baby. You're a baby. You're young. Just you. I'm pretty, but there are so many other pretty women out there uh, who would just you, who you wouldn't have to die for, uh, who you wouldn't have to risk your life for. She said, "Just go find one of those pretty girls. You know, there are pretty girls are a dime a dozen. Go find another pretty girl and go live your life. Because if you lose, you lose everything. Uh, and you know she." Again, she doesn't ever talk to these men. She doesn't ever feel pity or sorry for any of the men that she's beaten, beaten before. She's just kind of like, okay, yeah, let's just go and get it over with. But with Hippomenes, it's it's different a little bit. It's she instantly kind of feels those tugs at her at her heartstrings, and he's actually a very a good man, and she can sense that in him, and she can sense his earnestness. Not that he. And, and also, it's not that he just wants to possess her, right? Because with all these other men, it was a possession thing. They just wanted to best her. They wanted to beat her and they wanted to own her. But with him, but with Mr. Hippo, I know it's so s s silly to call him that, but 
with Mr. Hippo, it was different. It was, he just wanted to, he just wanted to be with her, right? It wasn't that he wanted to, uh, like, kind of squash her under his boot. He didn't want to change her in any way. He just, he just, he just wanted to be near her, right? He just wanted to be near her. She said, please just save yourself the trouble. Save yourself the trouble and the worry and just go find some girl who will, who will love you the way that you deserve to be loved, right? Because, you know, she, she doesn't, she doesn't want to hurt this man. She doesn't want to hurt this boy. He's not having it, though. Perhaps touched by the sweet feeling of love for the very first time, the inexperienced and unfriendly Atalanta softened her relentless, softened her relentless decision and thinks in the deepest part of her heart. Why has this unhappy boy chosen to die undeservedly as a reward for his love? I wish you, unhappy boy, had not ever seen me. If virginity was not my eternal destiny, you would be the one with whom I would gladly share my wedding bed. I wish and pray, you fool, that you are faster than me. So basically at this point she knows, you know, he's challenged her, she has to accept, but she's she's hoping and praying even though she knows without a shadow of a doubt that there's no way he's going to be faster than her. She's the fastest person in the world, right? But she's hoping and she's praying that somehow, some way, he's got some trick up his sleeve that he's going to actually beat her at this race. Because for the first time, she doesn't want to win. For the first time in her many years, she doesn't want to win. And I think that at that point, like like it says, she's touched by love for the very first time. I think at that point, she really she realizes that there's something other than winning. There's something other than dominating. And it and it and it's nice to not always want to be the best. It's nice to not always want to win. It's nice to want something other than you know what's best for yourself really right so venus help is on the way right so but hippomenes would not walk away or give up and so they made plans to race but not before Hipp hippomenes entrusted himself to the goddess of love and asked for her help you goddess who has inspired my blind passion help my fearlessness now, Venus was the goddess that actually answered his call, uh, and she answered the call wrapped in a white cloud, visible only to Hipp Hippomenes, and gave him three golden apples. She said, as bright as the sun, that uh, you should use these during the race in a certain way. Now, that's all she gives him. She doesn't tell him what to do. She doesn't tell him how to do it. She just said, here's three beautiful, like, jeweled golden apples. She says, use these in a certain way during the race and you were guaranteed to win so he's got he's got to sit there and he's got to think about what does she mean like what what is it that i'm supposed to be doing at this point and by george he gets it so the trumpets sounded and gave the signal for the race to start then the two uh contenders began to run and they ran they both ran so fast and with such speed that it was like they seemed to fly they seemed to fly from the starting line and just kind of immediately disappear onto the horizon Atalanta refused to pass and leave Hippomenes uh, behind. So she paced herself. Because again, this ain't nothing for her. This is nothing for her. So she paces herself. She paces herself and stations herself right beside Hippomenes. She says, oh, you know, I'm not going to, you're not going to win. But maybe you won't lose either. Because if she thinks that she is thinking that maybe if they tie, then she won't have to kill him, right? Because a tie is a tie. It's not technically a loss, right? So she stations herself directly beside him uh, and just kind of like is biding her time until the race is over. And Mr. Hippo is sitting there and he's, he's genuinely giving it his all. He's giving it everything he's got. He is really, really trying to win this race. But again, he knows that it is very unlikely uh and he knows for a fact that it's not gonna happen he's not going to be able to win this race on his own merit so he thinks back to what venus had said to him she had given him the three golden apples and he was like how do i use these how do i win and it comes to him just then uh but it's just uh At atalanta refused to pass and leave hippomenes behind and placed herself on par with him and couldn't help but gaze longingly at his handsome face just then, Hippomenes threw one of the three bright apples, and it immediately caught the eye and interest of Atlanta. She slowed her speed and bent to collect the golden fruit from the ground, examining it with curiosity. This gave Hipp Hippomenes the chance to pass her. Atlanta, of course, caught up, like, just in a flash, right? The minute she started actually trying again, 
she had passed him again but again she didn't really pass him she just kind of pulls up alongside him and was like huh but now she's got the golden apple and of course it's a it's a beautiful golden apple it's and she's a woman of a there's a bit of misogyny in these because it's the whole premise is is that she's so distracted by the bright shiny thing that nothing else just was passing through her mind but the need to collect it right so that's what they're banking on uh but of course she kind of like catches right up to him right so they're running again and again he pulls out the second golden apple and he throws it but this time he throws it in the opposite direction and he throws it a little bit harder and this time again they're far enough from they're far enough away from the finish line that she thinks that it that is you know it's safe for her to kind of slow down and to pick up this golden apple so that's what she does she slows down and she picks up the golden apple and then of course she like kicks back into overdrive she pulls right back up beside him and they continue to race now hippo hippomenes has one golden apple left and he's got to use it at exactly the right moment he's got to use it at exactly the right time in order for him to have any chance of winning this race so he bides his time and he waits until they're super close to the finish line super super close and then he pulls the last golden apple out of his pocket and he with all of his all of his might he throws it with as much might as he can mustard muster as 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 far as he can and he throws it in the complete opposite direction and Atalanta hesitates because she's very they're very very close to the finish line at this point and she cannot risk she can't risk losing this race right so she's like, ah, oh. but then she kind of like is overconfident in herself. And she's, you know what? I'm the fastest woman in the world. I can do this. I got this. I need that apple. So she slows and she turns around and she goes and she gets the apple. Well, the minute that she stoops down to pick up this apple, Hippo, uh, Hippo Manis just kind of like psh, puts it into high gear and he hightails it across the finish line. And all of a sudden she's lost the race. It's the first time she's ever lost anything in her life and she's she's just her mind is blown but how but she's not unhappy of course because she didn't want to lose she didn't want to win the race in the first place i mean she didn't want to lose it either but really you know she didn't have to go pick up the apples if she didn't want to so i think that was kind of like uh, uh they both helped her to lose the race honestly so she loses and uh quickly caught back up to him so she went Okay, so she picks up the third apple, he crosses the finish line, he has won the race, and she has lost. Uh, either she miscalculated her speed, or maybe she didn't want to win all that badly after all, because somehow she lost the race. Hippomenes crossed the finish line, and in doing so, earned his prize, the hand of At Atalanta in marriage. Now, you would think that this is where the story kind of ends, but unfortunately, it is not. So she ended up not getting into any trouble with her goddess Artemis because again she didn't just kind of like give in to Hippomenes she really did try to win the race things like that so Artemis was you know Artemis just wished her well Artemis wished her luck and love and happiness and Atalanta and Hippomenes they go off and they marry uh and in their excitement Hippomenes forgot to thank Venus for her help incomprehensively like the whole this whole like the whole boar hunt that started beforehand like where her name got out uh because you know they had killed the war and forgotten to um honor artemis properly well hip hip hippomenes forgets to honor venus he forgets to like basically grovel and thank her profusely for her help with the golden apples uh and she is again a big giant angry teenagers she is instantly just completely and totally just her she's very very mad uh, the gods are willing to help, but only if shown enough respect. The lack of thanks and recognition made the goddess feel neglected, and she grew incredibly offended. But what the gods give, they can also take away. Now, again, the gods have nothing but time. They have nothing but time. So they can sit there and they can, like, hold a grudge for, for freaking eternities. So even though Venus doesn't do anything right that very day uh, to kind of, like, address the fact that she's super PO'd so Hippomenes like she, she has time right but Hippomenes just doesn't even think anything about it right he just thinks that he you know he his, the goddess helped him uh he you know he's grateful and he's happy and he's gonna go off and live happily ever after with his wife right uh and they do for a time uh Atalanto and Hip Atalanto Atalanta and Hippomenes were married uh to the king's great joy 
and they did indeed have uh, one, they had one child, they had a, a boy uh, to, to take over the throne. Uh, and to their great joy, they lived together as man and wife very, very happily for a time. But one day as they were passing by the temple of Sibel, Sibel, is it Sibel or Sibel? The mother of the gods. Uh, they decided to rest because the trip they were on had been long. It was very hot and they were very, very tired. So they come across the temple and it offers shade and a place to rest. So they decide to take advantage of that. And they're just kind of, they just sit down and whew, relax, take a breather, just take a second, right? Well, uh, unfortunately for them, Venus has just been biding her time. She has just been biding her time and she sees her perfect opportunity to swoop in and call, cause all kinds of chaos and cause, you know, all kinds of pain for the two lovers. So what does she do? <sighs> Uh, they were tired. All of a sudden, Hippomenes was taken over by an overwhelming desire to lie with his wife, Atalanta, sparked, no doubt, by the vengeful Venus. And that's what she had done. She had basically given him a, a Viagra, like a spiritual Viagra, and says, oh, yep, get it on. Let, let's get it on right here. Uh, so right there in the sacred cave in front of the divine images, they desecrated the sanctuary with an obscene display of their love. Mother Sybil punished their lustfulness with a divine severity. Long and fierce manes covered their necks. Their hands became claws, and long tails emerged from their backs. Fiercely, they raised up their proud lion heads, and awful roars erupted from their jaws. The mother of the gods then tied the pair of lions with strong leather straps to her majestic carriage and tasked them to pull it tirelessly for the whole of eternity. So you would think, right? You would think that they would get this really beautiful happily ever after. They fought for their love. They did everything right. And they should be able to live happily ever after for the rest of forever. No, 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 no. Angry goddesses are definitely not to be trifled with. Uh, and she got them to royally screw themselves uh, in front of Mother Sybil. So what does Mother Sybil do? She turns the pair into lions and they are tasked with pulling her carriage for the rest of eternity. And not only are they tasked to pull her carriage for the rest of eternity, but she also makes them like uh, genderless, right? So they, they'll, they'll never touch again. They'll never make love again. They'll never know the warmth of each other's embrace again. She, she steals. She takes all of that from them, from them. And they're just basically they're just basically servants for the rest of eternity and it's heartbreaking it's so heartbreaking but again it all myths to me in, in in my opinion are equal parts beautiful and freaking tragic uh and this one i feel like is a little bit tragic because you think they're just like they're almost there they're almost there they almost have their happily ever after you know they got to enjoy it for a uh, for a short while they got to enjoy the fruits of their labors and things like that and then all of a sudden all it takes is just one angry goddess to ruin things for you for literally the rest of eternity and it wasn't even like they just they had to do it for the rest of their lifetime no 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 no. they had to do it for the rest of eternity so they couldn't even meet up again in the next lifetime it's just for, it's heartbreaking it's heartbreaking but a very very good story guys i hope you enjoyed it i almost got my makeup done i will of course finish my makeup and post finished pictures over on instagram and facebook guys if you're not following me everywhere you definitely should go do that i post fun content literally every single day uh, and if you're following me everywhere you don't have to worry about missing a single moment of it guys i love you so so very much and until next time don't forget to like subscribe make sure you're uh, following me uh, all that good stuff leave me a comment tell me what your favorite color is did you enjoy today's myth as always i love you so so very much stay safe take care of yourselves and remember you're important bye